And here we are on objective two of this lesson where we're going to be able to take our quadratic form and write it into whatever form we want it to be. So for example, maybe we want it to be in standard form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That one's going to be the easiest one to do. Uh, we'll just probably have to do some foiling and expanding out and whatnot. Or maybe we want it in vertex form, right there in the middle. And uh, notice that you have that set of parentheses at x minus 12.4 quantity squared. That's going to come from completing the square, so we'll probably have to do that. And then finally, maybe we want to put our equation, for whatever reason, in intercept form, that last one there. And that two set of parentheses should indicate that we're going to have to uh, factor. All right. So in the picture there, you can see there's a parabola traced out by this motorcycle maniac doing some sort of jumpy move thing. All right. So write each of these functions in standard form. Standard form, just a little reminder, gentle reminder, y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. What form is the first one in? Well, the first one is in uh, intercept form. So to get it from intercept form into standard form, piece of cake. All we have to do is expand out this, uh, what's it called? Foiling, sure. So y is equal to negative 7. Let's foil this out. x squared, well, that's the first set of terms. And then plus x, and then minus 6x. And then minus 6, simplify all that inside the parentheses there, x squared minus 5x minus 6. And then finally, let's distribute that 7 through there, and we'd have negative 7x squared plus 35x plus 42. Y equals all of that. There it is in standard form. How easy is that? You don't have to answer that question. Uh, number two, this one is in vertex form. Vertex being that 3, 9, in case you were wondering. Um, let's put that in standard form. So we'll have to expand out this binomial. We'll have to square it out, so 2 times. Let's use the shortcut, x squared minus, now you multiply these two, so negative 3x, and then you double it, so negative 6x. Plus, now you take that 3 and you square it, 9 plus 9. Distribute the 2 through all this, 2x squared minus 12x plus 18, plus this other 9 that's right there, and we get y is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 27. That looks good. That looks accurate. So, pro tip number one on the standard form, putting your equation, your, your, uh, your function into standard form, very, very simple. You're just going to be doing some foiling, some distributing, expanding as necessary, and that's it. Just make your equation look like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Super simple. Here are two of them for you to try. All right, let's take a look here. Ooh, I like the color combination that you've chosen here for your answers. So in the first one, whenever it's in intercept form, just uh, foil out those parentheses, distribute the two, you get y equals 2x squared plus 18x plus 40. And then in number two, whenever it's in uh, vertex form, uh, square the binomial there using your little pattern, and then distribute your negative three, combine your like terms. Obviously, I'm going to have to deal with Rowan right now. So, uh, take a break. <sighs> oh, my. I think we were doing some stuff about quadratic functions, right? Ah, yes. Okay, so in this next set of equations, we're going to put them in intercept form. And unless I'm mistaken... Intercept form goes like this. Y equals A times X minus P times X minus Q. 
and uh, the stuff that's in parentheses here, we're going to get that by using uh, an F word on this. We're going to be factoring. Dun 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 dun. Like it just, anyway, so uh, we're just going to factor this over here. So let's just go ahead and open up our two sets of parentheses. I don't know why that one was so small. X and X in the first position because X times X gives me X squared. Now, this thing times this thing is supposed to be negative 14. So our product is negative 14, and they have to add up to 5. So a sum of 5. So what could that be? How about 7 and 2? 7 and 2 would work. 7 here and a 2 here, and I need a positive 5, so a plus 7 and a minus 2. Oh, there you go. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. It is in intercept form now, officially. Uh, how about number two here? So notice, first of all, that I've got a negative out front. I don't want that. So I'm going to pull that thing out. And then everything is at least divisible by two. So let's uh, pull that out as well. So the GCF is negative two. Negative two. And then I'd have 4x squared up plus 19x and minus 5. There we go. And now let's uh, foil, no, 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 factor. Yeah, what's in parentheses there? So I still have my negative 2. Open up some parentheses. Now, the first set, the first uh, set of factors have to multiply up to 4x squared. So I could just choose anything. Um, most people would probably choose 2 times 2, but I'm going to go ahead and choose a 4 times 1. And the reason why I'm going to is because they're going to add up to that 19 there, and they've got to be kind of big. So a 4x and an x. And then the last ones are easy because they have to multiply up to 5. Well, negative 5. And our sum, our middle sum, has to be 19. So the only way I'm going to get 19, I'm going to get, and there's some proper English for you, is if I put the 4 and the 5 together, so that's going to make it 20, and then I put the 1 here. I need the 19 to be positive, so plus here and minus there. Let's just check it, just check it to be sure. Remember, you check it using this like rainbow thing, the inside and the outside terms, so I get a negative x there, and the outside terms, I get a plus 20x. That's definitely 19x, so we did it right y equals negative 2, 4x minus 1 times x plus 5. And we're done. Nope, we're not. And here's the reason why we're not done. If you look back at the general form up here, it's x minus p and x minus q. So this factor is okay, but this one right here is not okay. Why is it not okay? Because it has a 4 there that I have to get rid of. Also, what is my a value of the original equation? My a value is negative 8. Right now it looks like it's just a negative 2. So wouldn't I get a negative 8 if I were to have multiplied the 4 times the 2? All right, so it, it would still be the same a value, but i got to make it look like that by pulling this 4 out. Now, ordinarily you'd only do that if it was a GCF. But in this case, we have to pull it out, even though it's not. So when I do pull it out, it's going to multiply times this 2 to make negative 8. Inside the parentheses, whenever you pull out that 4, you're dividing both things by 4. So I'm going to have x minus 1 fourth times the x plus 5. So here we go. Now just to check this, just to make sure here, this x-intercept would be one-fourth, right? x-intercept would be one-fourth. Would I still get one-fourth as the x-intercept from this if I were to set that equal to zero? I'll do that work right up here, real tiny, real small. I'd get 4x minus 1 equals zero. Add your 1 over and divide one-fourth. Well, look at that. That's exactly what I got. All right. So uh, let me give you a little pro tip on this one then. Pro tip number two on intercept form. So if it's going to be an intercept form, you're going to have to do some factoring. 
but step number one, always take out a GCF, especially if it's a negative number. If the leading coefficient is negative, I've got to pull it out. So if I look at this equation right here, y equals negative 6x squared minus x plus 15, I don't have any, anything in common at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and just take out the negative. So it's going to look like this so far. So now I have a trinomial left over inside the parentheses. Now I just factor that thing as usual. And the way that it factors is just like this, 3x minus 2x minus 3 and 3x plus 5. Is it in intercept form yet? No. What do you got to do? Well, now you have to make it look like, or make each of the factors look like this, x plus or minus p. So the x is by itself, and then you're adding or subtracting some sort of number from it. Whatever you pull out is going to become part of the a value. So if I look at what I have here, I'm going to have to take that first factor and I'm going to have to divide out a 2 because that's what's numbers in front of the x. And what am I going to pull out of the second one? A 3. That's right, I'm going to pull out a 3 of this one. And if I pull those out, the 2 times the 3 gives me a negative 6. It's going to match up with the original a value. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to pull out that uh, pull out the 2 from the first one, pull out the 3 from the second one. If I pull out the 2 from the first one, I get I divide both of those things by 2, so it becomes x minus 3 halves. Pulling out the 3 from the last one, you get x plus 5 thirds, 5 divided by 3. Okay, So notice now, of course, that those two the a values match up. They're exactly the same. All right, so here are two of them for you to practice that on. Might take a bit. I don't know. Give it a try. Go ahead and pause. And let's look at these answers. Oh, very patriotic color choices. Uh, okay, so uh, again, putting it in intercept form, we have to do some factoring. When the leading coefficient's a 1, it's just straight factoring. There's nothing else to do there. So in the first one, y equals x minus 6 times x plus 8. If you were to FOIL that out, you'd get uh, the original equation. All right, that looks good. Number two, when the leading coefficient is a negative 12, like it is here, um, then it gets a little tricky. So the first thing is we got to factor out the GCF, making sure we take the negative sign with it. It just makes it so much easier to factor anyway. Uh, and then also 3 goes into all of it. So I pull that out first and then factor the trinomial that's left, 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 7. If you leave it like that, you're not going to get full credit for your answer. To get full credit, you got to pull those 2's out so that you can make the negative 12 match up with the negative 12 as the a value from the original equation. So divide both set of parentheses by that 2 and pull them out to the front. So your final equation, y equals negative 12 times x minus 5 halves times x minus 7 halves. Nice.